in subsidiary, the balance of the account in the books is 75,000 that we have to close the investment account. We are going to close in the amount of 75,000 and we credit to accumulated depreciation for uh, 2,000. Okay, so we have now the uh, NCI at acquisition date equal to 90,000. That's uh, uh, to be multiplied by 20%. So the amount of the NCI at acquisition date is only equal to uh, 18,000, uh, which we have to credit for the amount of 18,000. Now, why do we have 90,000 at acquisition date? The original amount of uh, the share capital and the NCI and the uh, retained earnings is uh, only for 74,000. However, we have the fair value adjustments in the amount of 16,000. That's the fair value adjustments that we have in the table. So that gives the total after adjustment for the fair value, the total of 90,000. That's the fair value of the subsidiary. So you multiply that by 20%. We now get the NCI equal to 18,000. In step number five, we recognize the depreciation of fair value adjustment during the year. So we have now the amount of uh, to recognize nice uh, the depreciation uh, during the year. We now debit to uh, depreciation uh, fair value on inventory. Uh, we now debit to cost of sales as we assume the use of the FIFO method. So the inventory at the beginning of the year is already close to cost of sales. Now in the amount of 8,000, then we debit to depreciation expense supposed to be on the equipment sold for only 2,000 and we close inventory by 8,000 and credit to accumulated depreciation. So that's to recognize the depreciation of fair value adjustment and as well as the charging of the inventory to cost of sales. Now we go to closing journal entry number six to adjust the retained earnings accounts for fair value adjustments, we now debit on retained earnings uh, of ABC, that's 8,000 plus 2,000 multiplied by 80%. So we get 8,000 retained earnings of XYZ in the amount of 2,000 and credit to income summary for 10,000 in step number six okay now we have the uh step number six no actually in step number four as we go back to step number four to make adjustment of the non-controlling interest in net assets the net assets of xyz company at its fair value uh, for the amount of 97,000, we multiplied that by 20%. So we get the total of 19,400 goodwill to NCI net of accumulated impairment losses, none. So we have the non-controlling interest in net assets on December 31, 20X1. Now after step number three uh, step number three that uh, we already have uh, step number one followed by 
step number two and uh, step number three when we have our closing journal entries. Now we go to step number four, non-controlling interest in net assets. That's the amount of 19,400. And uh, we go to step number five. In step number five, uh, here we have uh, the consolidated retained earnings. The consolidated retained earnings. Uh, ABC's retained earnings on December 31, 20X1 for 116,000. Then we have the consolidation adjustments. The net change in net assets of XYZ in the amount of 5,600. And then we have the unamortized deferred gain in step one because of the downstream uh, sale. So we have now your net consolidation adjustments in the amount of 2,600. The amount of 2,600. So the consolidated uh, retained earnings of uh, uh, that's now your consolidated amount on December 31, 20X1 is 118,600. Now we go to step number six. Uh, by the way, for some uh, uh, supporting computations, uh, we have this. Now in step number six, in step number six, for the consolidated profit or loss, uh, we have now the parent and the subsidiary, the profits before adjustments. So we have now the profits before adjustments as already given. We have the profit for the year of ABC given 66,000 and that of XYZ is at 17,000. Now these are the amounts given to you in your statements of profit or loss. Now for the adjustments, the unamortized gain in step one, uh, we deduct 3,000. In the consolidated, we also deduct 3,000 because this amount is still deferred gain. Then we are going to uh, get the profits before fair value adjustments, uh, 63,000 subsidiary, 17,000 and we have the total of 80,000. Then we move to depreciation of fair value adjustments. That's for 8,000 in the parent, subsidiary 2,000. So the total is 10,000. And we now get the uh, net amount for the parent of 55,000 subsidiary 15,000 for the consolidated amount of 70,000. The shares in the depreciation of fair value adjustments. Uh, for step number seven, we have the profit or loss attributable to owners of parents and the NCI. So we have now your ABC's uh, profits before fair value adjustments in step number six. Uh, we have now 63,000 and uh, we have uh, the amount extended for consolidation. That's now for the parent and the subsidiary. So the parent, 63,000. The share in the profit of XYZ in the amount of 13,600. And uh, that's for the amount in the profit of the subsidiary. That of uh, the non-controlling interest is 
3,400. Uh, we have the total of 17,000. Depreciation of fair value adjustment in step six. So finally, we have the profit uh, of the owners and of the consolidated amounts. Four shares in XYZ's profit before fair value adjustments. So we have now the uh, given amounts as computed. For our closing journal entry number seven, uh, to follow the one given in uh, number six, uh, closing journal entry that we already had. In closing journal entry number seven, to eliminate the post acquisition change in XYZ's net assets and to recognize without D non-controlling interest in post-acquisition change in net assets. We now debit to retained earnings of XYZ, credit to retained earnings of ABC 13,600 and the NCI post-acquisition amounting to 1,400. So we have now the corresponding notes at the bottom. Four, uh, we have now the steps to be considered. Steps one to seven. And uh, finally, uh, we have the uh, consolidated statements and the uh, adjustments and eliminations. So we now have your assets, liabilities, and equity of the parent and the subsidiary. So for the parent, we have cash, consolidated amount of 80,000, then accounts receivable of uh, consolidated 97,000, inventory, 105,000 for the parent, 15,000 for the subsidiary, and we have the closing entry now for uh, debiting and finally crediting the amount of the inventory. So the consolidated amount is 120,000. We eliminate the account investment in subsidiary so it's now equal to zero for the equipment now we have the amount of that of the parent is 190,000 uh, we credit 10,000 because of the sale then again we have xyz the adjusted amount after buying is 62,000 so we have a credit of 2,000, leaving us 190,000 at 62. That makes uh, 252. And then we debit 10,000, 262. And we deduct 2,000 for uh, the balance of 260,000. For accumulated depreciation being a credit, balance of the parent is 6,000 and 23,000. We now debit 1,000 in our consolidation and adjustment entry and credit 6,000. So the difference equal to 84,000. With 6,000 at 23,000, that 79,000 add uh, 6,000 is 85,000 all credits and we deduct 1,000 leaving a balance of 84,000 for goodwill goodwill now is a debit of 3,000 so for the total assets and uh, we have now your uh, adjusted amount total assets 476,000 for the liabilities and equity we now have accounts payable 
73,000 bonds payable of 30,000. The total is 103,000. Share capital, we are now eliminating that of uh, XYZ, leaving us 170,000. Share premium, 65,000. Retained earnings beginning that of the parent and of the subsidiary, and then we are debiting 52,000 and crediting 13,600. The balance now of the consolidated retained earnings is 118,600. For the non controlling interest of 19,400, 19,000. 400 for the non-controlling interest and your total uh, liabilities amounting to 103,000 total equity of 373. The total liabilities and shareholders equity of 476,000. Then we have sales consolidated we did a cost of sales we have an adjustment due to inventory so we now get the total of a uh, gross profit hundred seventy five thousand depreciation the adjustment uh, of debit and credit giving the amount after adjustment of fifty two thousand the distribution cost no adjustment and then we have interest expense uh, gain on sale of equipment we have finally eliminated in our closing journal entry number one so finally we have the consolidated statement of financial position as we look at the uh, consolidated uh, column the consolidated column giving us the assets the liabilities and the shareholders equity accounts so we have assets in the form of cash accounts receivable inventory then we have equipment minus the accumulated depreciation and finally goodwill then for accounts payable bonds payable we have now your total liabilities of 103,000 share capital of 170,000 after the elimination entries share premium of the parent then retained earnings and finally the share of the non-controlling interest so in our statement of financial position we just copy from the last column the consolidated balances so total assets of 476,000 total liabilities 103,000 and then share capital retained earnings and share premium total of owners uh, of parent or we now have the parents uh, equity and add the non-controlling interest so we have the total liabilities and uh, equity in our consolidated uh, statement of financial position and finally we have your uh, consolidated statement of profit or loss we have sales then we did the cost of sales again we can just refer to the consolidated uh, column here we have the consolidated column where you have your nominal accounts and finally giving us the consolidated net income equal to 70,000. So we have the statement of profit or loss for the year ended December 31, 20X1. We have now the total sales uh, consolidated. We did the cost of sales. 
giving the gross profit and then we deduct depreciation and depreciation uh, distribution cost and deduct interest expense the profit for the year is 70,000 then the profit is attributable to the owners of the parent for 68,600 and the non-controlling interest of 1,400. Now we have the reconciliation uh, using the formula. By the way, we are dealing with the share of the profit, no? Amounting to 70,000 and uh, that's your consolidated amount, no? Including the non-controlling interest in your consolidated profit or loss, okay? Now we have the computations of this in the previous slides. Now for the reconciliation using the given formula. Here we have the total assets of ABC, that of XYZ, the investment in uh, subsidiary for uh, originally uh, that was for 72,000. Uh, but we have the effect of the intercompany transaction. So we are now uh, recording the fair value adjustments net of 16,000 minus 10,000 and we record goodwill at net of 3,000. So the consolidated total assets of 476,000. We now have the total liabilities and uh, still 103,000. For the share uh, in the capital of uh, the whole uh, entity, 170,000, this is found in the consolidated uh, statement. Then we have the share premium of 65,000 with the consolidated retained earnings of 118,000. Then we add the non-controlling interest which we can find in the consolidated uh, column here we have the consolidated statement of financial position giving us the balances for share capital we have already eliminated that of xyz the same with retained earnings uh, by the way, XYZ has no share premium. So we now have the uh, owners uh, or the parents equity of 353,600. And uh, we are now adding uh, the non-controlling interest of 319,400. All in all, we have uh, 400. 76,000 for the liabilities and the shareholders equity. And finally, for your uh, consolidated total uh, equity, for the consolidated uh, total equity, we have the amount of 373,000 as the sum of share capital, share premium, consolidated retained earnings, and the non-controlling interest. Now, may I uh, advise you to, to review on this uh, uh, various slides